Welcome to week five of the spring class for Journey to Oneness. So glad that you can all be here. Um, we, are, we are moving through. We have just two weeks left before the end. And, um, and I like to say, I, I hope that you're beginning to sense or to experience a thread running through all of these. Of course, it is for uh, preparation for marriage. I mean, that is our goal. That's the purpose of these classes. Uh, but then there, within that, there is also a very strong family of origin thread going through these classes. You might remember a couple of weeks ago, I said, Jesus must, might be in your heart, but grandpa's in your bones. And, and it, it is just the truest thing I know these days. <laughs> Jesus, that's why he transforms us, right? That's why he wants to make us more like him because we're more like grandpa. Well, you know what I mean. Just, just the, the idea of our, um, our families of origin. And so, um, so you and I, we've been on a journey for, you know, however long you may have, um, some people maybe a few years, somebody many years. Um, mine's like, I think I'm heading to 40 years this, this summer um, of being a Christian. And, and so I've done lots of growing. There are a lot of ways that my life does not look like my family of origin. And yet I still find things popping up um, and, um, and maybe even, I don't know if you've ever heard anyone say, the older I get, the more I remind myself of my mother. <laughs> that actually happens in the mirror for me right now. I, I, I've never been told I look like my mom, but every time I look in the mirror, I see it. Um, but, but I do think that it's important for us as couples to, to make that a reality, to just say, we are, this is where we came from. And, and, and some of our families have really wonderful qualities and maybe some quirky ones, maybe some things are less positive quality or, well, that wouldn't be a quality, would it be? Um, but the, the idea is that we wanna say, okay, this is something to always, always be aware of. And when we are in a relationship with Jesus, when you are a follower of Jesus, um, you know, what you want to remember is that it's always about you bringing yourself to him and thinking about who you are, who you want to be, who he created you to be. So there's this, this thread or, or um, a focus on identity, like my identity is in Christ and he created me to be this person. When we get married, we say, I want to be the best me I can be for my spouse. Um, for the kingdom of God, for others. And so when, um, when we're doing these classes, that's what we're thinking about for you. How, can you. how can you be a gift to the other person? We spend a lot of time in our society, correct me if I'm wrong, um, trying to find the right person for us. You know, is this the right person for you, Mary? Is this the one? We don't talk much about the one on these online classes, but... Um, uh, you know, that, that is kind of a romantic notion that there's one person out there for me. Um, soulmates do exist, you know, you, you can, but you, what you mostly want to think about is, do, am I intending to give my very best to this person that God has brought to me? God's son or daughter, will I give my very best? And is that, you know, is that who I am becoming? So, uh, so again, week five, this is conflict resolution week, which I would say is the most popular or no, the most commonly um, named as something that folks want to have in premarital um, classes, conflict resolution. Um, there are lots of things out there about how to fight fair and, you know, how to argue well. And um, we just decided not to do that. We're not going to teach that. We, we want to teach you more skills um, about how to listen to one another well. And that, that probably falls into those other things too. But, but we're going to talk today about conflict resolution styles and then also about um, 
about active listening, which again, is not culturally common to know how to do active listening um, or to value it. And so um, Alvin and Angela are gonna talk to us more about that later. So before we start, before I start teaching on the styles, sharing those styles with you, does anyone have a question or a comment? Does everybody receive their participants guide this time? You all got that? Um, we'll be using that somewhat today. And um, at some, right, probably pretty quick here, I'm gonna be bringing up a, um, a PowerPoint for us to look at. I've got a chart, so no questions. Let me double check, no one else has popped in. I think we're good. All right, let me bring up that PowerPoint. Let's see now. Hmm. Sorry, guys, I'm going to do a little technical here. Nope. Hmm. Oh, I definitely am having some technical difficulties. I want to see you all and the PowerPoint at the same time. Let's see what I can do here. One more try. All right, well, I'm not gonna, I guess I'm not gonna be able to see you. Um, as much, so I'll just trust that you're there. <laughs> um, all right, so conflict resolution styles. The first slide talks about just three things we're gonna, um, we're gonna go over. What was the environment for conflict resolution? Um, what was it like when you were growing up in your family of origin? So conflicts in this sense um, will mostly be talking about something negative, where two people are disagreeing or unhappy with one another. Although there are conflicts where you just disagree about something, um, but maybe that was handled in a certain way in your home. As I said, though, we're mostly going to go for when something has gone wrong. Two people are upset with one another, disagreeing, um, and, and things go kind of south. So what was that like for people in your family? Um, also, when we talk about these styles, there are five styles. The one thing to remember is that you may employ more than one. Um, you may employ one for, for, say, for finances, and then you may employ another one for parenting. Uh, and so you want to just think about it from that perspective. You don't have to be just one type. You can have different types because there might be different areas from your past that trigger you in some way. So, um, so we want to see if you can identify yours and your partner's conflict resolution styles. And in your participants guide, you, I think there is some, there's a, a good description of it, um, but I'm pretty sure they're in your book as well. So if you need these descriptions um, and you don't have it, just let me know for sure. Okay. All right, I'm gonna just minimize this for a second. Can everyone see the conflict resolution styles? Matt, can you, oh, no, I have to share. That would be helpful. Hold on, everyone. Here we go. Okay. There, now I got y'all in there. All right, now can you see? Everybody nod? Um, all right, so we have conflict resolution styles. This is an X, Y axis. That's about all I know about math. <laughs> There's um, on this axis is independent or more flexible, a family style of conflict resolution where 
folks were were pretty independent of one another. Not not a lot of um, interaction when it came to resolving conflicts. Everybody did their own thing. On the bottom, of this axis is closeness, or we say stickiness, where um, where there was a lot of merging, where people did what maybe the dominant personality said to do, what's going on. Um, and so closeness is really valued or independence is really valued on these. So we've put the different, the five different types are competing, compromising, accommodating, and avoidance and collaborating. We put these on here, like kind of where they generally fall when it comes to independence or closeness. And so we'll start with competing. Competing style uh, is, a, is an I win kind of a style. This person is, um, while some people might think they just want to win just for the sake of it, uh, really what is typically behind this is wanting to be able to move on from the conflict, not wanting to be stuck there, not wanting to be upset, not wanting there to be tension. And so they might um, say, we have to resolve this now. It can, we cannot wait, it can't go, keep going. Um, and we, we usually kind of laughingly say, this is the person who follows you around until you go into the bathroom and shut and lock the door. And they're outside the door talking to you through the door. Um, you know, like if, if that's you, you know, you'll recognize yourself. You don't really wanna take a break and cool down. You, you think that it needs to be done now and it needs to be done so you can move on. So that's, um, while that's a fairly good um, goal, uh, or, or I'm sorry, value, it's not a good goal because we're two different people. And if both of you are like that, it might work out okay, but most likely you're gonna be different in some way. And a lot of people need more time to resolve conflicts. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, but remember, we don't want to assign negative uh, qualities to these as much as we want to say, understand why this is happening. So compromising is more saying, um, you know, like whatever you want to do. I'm sorry, that's a common name. Compromising is saying, um, you know, let's, uh, it'll be my turn now, your turn later, you know, like, we, we, want, we always want to compromise. We want to come to a decision together. Um, and, and so this, this one can be more independent because they're, um, they're not so much either wanting it to be the, done the way they do it, or they're also not saying, oh, it has to be the way you want it. It's more accommodating, or I'm sorry, more compromising. And these are, as I said before, a little bit more independent, more um, a sense of this is how it's supposed to be. Closeness is a little bit more fused. When we have a conflict, we come together, we all resolve it together. We, everybody is kind of of one mind in our family. And as I said before, there might be a person who's the dominant person that everyone else follows. And so accommodating is Whatever you want is okay with me. This person um, seems to just really be, just wanna keep the peace and is fine with whatever everyone else wants. But often they keep track and they might later say, why do we always have to do what you wanna do? But they forget that they were the ones that said, let's do what you wanna do. So you might find yourself in that, in that area. Avoidance is a little bit, um, it's probably the most complicated of all. Avoidance has to do with uh, fearing that uh, um, a conflict will threaten the relationship. And again, this can come, this usually comes from family of origin. If there was some sort of rejection or shaming or actual abandonment when conflict occurred, then often folks avoid it like any way they can. Um, as you might guess, um, folks in the avoidance um, corner probably marry a competing. They marry one another, right? We, <laughs> we, uh, we find each other somehow. We say, oh, they're so different from me. That's so wonderful. And then um, in conflict, it can, be, it can be really hard. 
So the avoidance person um, can, you can think about it like that. How can we make this a safe place to do conflict? That, that fear that things are gonna go south. Um, one of the things we learned about in self-protective battles was triggering, right? So if, if something in me is triggered by my husband's style of conflict resolution, can he allow for me to take some time to, to come down, you know, to relax or to just um, go to God, you know, pr have some time to pray, maybe meditate a little bit on scripture, whatever it is, just, just relax and come back to it later. So the person that is an avoider might have, they might say, well, I don't think we need to, to talk about it. It's not that important. What they need to understand is it is, especially to someone who's a computer or in that vicinity. It, it's, you know, like they really need, as much as you need not to do the conflict, they really need to resolve the conflict. I was talking to a young woman recently who broke up with her boyfriend and she's a really strong personality, confident woman. And she said, he just didn't like conflict and conflict is my love language. <laughs> and I thought, oh my, good luck. I mean, she means it too. She just values somebody really challenging her. And that is, that's, a, that's fine to be who she is. And yet she's gonna have to understand that that's not, that may not be the style of the person that she's in relationship with. So, um, so there's avoidance. And what you might notice here is that collaborating is in the center. It would be the one that we would say is the most healthy way uh, to resolve conflict. And that's one where you both um, get to be heard and understood. Some people call it win-win. Um, it's not always that clear. That's a pretty simplistic way to think of it. I like, because sometimes not everything can always be fair, right? Not every time can each of you have exactly the same as the other or each get your way exactly the, you know, we're, we're not measuring here. We're saying, I want to know what's, what's going on with you and I want what's best for you. How can, how can I find out about that? And then how can you find out about me? And we can then try and work on something together. So collaborating brings folks who are anywhere down in this quadrant or anywhere up in this quadrant together. And that's what, here, what we have here. We've got these nice red arrows showing you that every one of us needs to move toward one another. Wherever the other person is, we want to move toward one another. Um, and one of the things that, um, that I think is the best about this is that if, if you think about it, if someone who's an avoider or doesn't like conflict asks or, is, or loves closeness, really wants to be close all the time and do everything together and you know, any of those things, if they ask this person who's more independent and competing and flexible, if they ask them to come all the way down here, that is really a lot to ask. So always do that. And so, and vice versa. If this person up here asks this person to never be able to have time to resolve a conflict, just what would happen here is the computer wants to resolve it and this person would say, okay, all right, yeah, that's fine, okay. And you're not getting the, the whole person. You're not getting, you know, all of that person or the best of that person. So what we're saying is, can you, can you come toward one another? That's what we're saying here. Can you move toward one another? Um, talk about how that, what that would look like. And then, then com commit to saying, let's try this for a while. The things that we teach you and the skills that we give you are never meant to be rules. You know, where like you say, okay, I'm going to do this and you're going to do that. And if, and if you don't do what you said you're going to do, I don't have to do what I said I'm going to do. That is not the spirit of this. The spirit of this is, you know, the, the Holy Spirit in me, what, you know, is saying this is this is the way that I that it needs to be for us, that it would be best for us. 
What do you think? Spirit in you is telling you this. And so you're able to come together. Whenever you start feeling like someone's saying, well, you said you would do this and that's not doing that. Or, um, or you're not giving me what you said you would give me. Then you're, you're trying to control, okay? That, that's, that's trying to maintain control. Another way to say it would be, um, you know, we talked about doing it like this. Can we, can we start over? You know, what would it be like for us to do it the way that we talked about before? And so we have a lot of room for growth in this area. And you as couples, as you, as you uh, do this, you, you know, we hope that what you do in class tonight, you'll keep doing. Like you'll begin to employ this in your relationship, um, but you may not. You know, but tonight what you're going to do is you're going to think about where you land on this map and what it would look like to come toward one another in a collaborative way through active listening. And, um, and, I, and, and as I said, Alvin and Angela are going to teach on this. They're also going to introduce themselves to you. Um, but what I just want to say is that, uh, that active listening um, is, is a gift that we give to each other. And, it, and the way that we're teaching it tonight may seem a little kind of simple, um, but we want you to think of it as a way to slow yourselves down. That's, the, that's one of the main keys to this. I wanna, when, I, when we get into conflict or we disagree or we're debating something, I wanna slow myself down and say, hmm, wonder why they're thinking this way. Wonder why they're acting that way. So, um, all right, I am going to stop sharing. And let's see, I think, oh wait, you know what I do have, Alvin and Angela, I do have this one funny to put up. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, where's my phone? Hey everybody, what do you think of this? <laughs> so maybe you've seen that in your family of origin, maybe you've experienced it. Um, you know, it's so familiar to us and one of the reasons it's so familiar is because uh, we, it, it's us, so. All right, Alvin and Angela, I'd love to have you introduce yourselves to tell us a little bit about how long you've been married, your journey um, uh, to uh, marriage and family, your, your kids, your work. It's a little over. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Kelly. You know, first and foremost, um, I'm Alvin and this is Angela and we're gonna you know, tell you about ourselves, but I wanna commend you all for, um, for doing this in a pandemic, right? Um, <laughs> for working on your relationships, um, for you know, following the Lord and coming together um, in your commitment or engagement, and then taking this class um, online. Um, it's a big step, but it, I, I will tell you that it will pay dividends and you know, using these tools that Pastor Kelly is teaching you, um, you'll remember this stuff and it, it will help you. Um, and then I also encourage you, um, if it's available to you, to, to, to be coached. Um, and that's one of the things that we did. Um, we um, are a remarried couple. So um, it's interesting that uh, we're teaching conflict resolution because, you know, We've got a lot of experience, uh, bad and, or challenging and good. Uh, and so, um, you know, we wanna share, um, you know, the good, good things that we've learned uh, with you. But we're a remarried couple. We, um, I've been attending Vineyard Columbus since 2013. And um, Angela and I got married in 2016. 
Um, interestingly, we both got divorced the same year. We got both got divorced in 2012, and then we got married in 2016. And, you know, there's some other commonalities that we have that Angela will tell you about. But we've got um, a blended family, six children amongst us. Uh, most of them are adults. Uh, we have one 15-year-old, but the others are, you know, in their 20s and are independent. Um, and, um, you know, we, are, we have busy lives. Um, I'm a lawyer. Um, that's my work. And then Angela is a chief of staff for the clerk's office. Um, and so we're very, very busy. Um, and then we do ministry together. And so I'll let Angela tell you some stuff about um, our ministry together and et cetera. Absolutely. So um, Alvin was saying, we have a lot of things in common, but we didn't know one another, um, which is, it sounds far-fetched because <laughs> our children were in the same track club. Um, your younger daughter was at preschool. My kid, it's, yeah, just a lot. Um, you had my work phone number as a result of where I worked. He had my number in case he needed to contact the um, city attorney's office, uh, but we didn't know one another. Um, so we came together pretty quickly. Um, Alvin likes to say we wouldn't be able to get married at the vineyard because we met and got married within six months. Um, we both came from a marriage where we have been married 21 years with our ex. Um, we both went to church. I went to a church that um, service was a lot longer than the vineyard. So we would go to the vineyard on Saturday and my church on Sunday, um, which would last sometimes three hours -ish. Yeah, about three hours, sometimes longer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, once we got married, we decided we should fellowship together and worship together. Um, so I joined the Vineyard in 2016. Um, we are on the prayer ministry together, which is a really wonderful ministry. Um, I didn't really think of myself as one to just come up and pray for people, but to have God use you, the Holy Ghost use you in that way is, um, it's a blessing to me, the prayer -er, as for the pray -e, Um, but it was, we also do, well, this ministry, um, we teach and we coach. We were coached. Um, Alvin and I were coached early in our marriage. I did not think we needed to be coached. I didn't, I didn't understand. I, we just got married was the problem. But um, as I went to the class and our coaches were like incredible. It was just such a blessing to have someone take time out of their life to help us have a better marriage. So um, Jason talked us into becoming coaches um, and it's been a blessing. Uh, we do not always follow the tools that we learn here. Um, I hate to say that, but we do not. It's usually because we forgot or we're- In the heat of the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me um, too. <laughs> But it's good to have the tools because um, even when we start off without them, we eventually come back around. And it, it is a good way to come together and hear one another, validate one another's concerns. So this is um, wonderful that you're learning this. And um, there's one thing that we've just never done and that's hold hands while you're arguing haven't got to that uh, level just yet, but w one day, we'll, maybe. We'll work. We've tried it a couple of times and then usually you pull away, but 
um, <laughs> in any event, no, um, mm -hmm. um, we, we appreciate the opportunity to share this evening. Um, again, it's a blessing to be with you all. And we look forward to um, sharing about um, our experiences with conflict resolution. All right. How about we start with active listening then? Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, active listening, what does active listening look like? Um, first of all, um, who, raise your hand, who here has never had a disagreement? <laughs> I saw somebody getting ready Chris? to, but I, I, I wanted to see, yeah. So we all have disagreements and um, a lot of them come from not listening or, or not paying attention or not validating our um, partner's concerns. So one of the things that we have to do is we have to attend to our partner, that terminology, that's really good language. And what that means is that we need to be present. So um, I know with the age of cell phones and the like, sometimes we multitask. And that's when you're trying to actively listen, you need to give your uh, future spouse attention. That means put your cell phone away or turn the television off or whatever the distraction could, could look like. Um, you want to make sure your partner feels as if you're actively attending that particular moment. So. Yeah, and I see Rodney there. Rodney is a football fan. He's got, he's got a jersey on. And, you know, some of us guys, we like to watch football, right? And some of the women, I don't want to stereotype, or, or basketball or, you know, or baseball or, or whatever, whatever the sport is. And so, you know, if there's something that needs to be discussed and the game is on, um, and, and I think um, Myron, Myron's got a jersey on too. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, we have to make sure that we are paying attention and um, the cell phone really is a big, a big one. Um, anybody ever had a discussion with your partner and they've got their cell phone, you know, scrolling or reading a text or sending a text? Anybody ever seen that? <laughs> Don't look at anybody. <laughs> but a, a, a good, um, a good habit is to, um, to put those things aside, um, turn the television off, um, or wait till the game is over to have the discussion and to give each other your, your full attention because that's really, really important. Um, the other thing that really helps validate um, when, when you're having a discussion is to restate what the person is saying, right? So um, if there's a topic that Angela wants to talk about and I'm not even listening to her and I'm unable to tell her what she just told me, then that's a big problem. And so if I'm able to repeat it, that actually validates her because she knows that I'm listening, right? Exactly. Um, and so we did this um, for one of Kelly's classes before. And um, well, Alvin wasn't listening. He was unable to tell me what I <laughs> said, um, even though this is the whole purpose we're here. I, what, what were you thinking about? Yeah, I just completely blanked out. We were doing an exercise on active listening and and um, she asked me, I was asked to restate what she just told me and I was unable to do it. I completely froze. Um, so um, it's really, really important to uh, be able to restate what the person uh, told you. It's like sprinkling salt in a seasoning dish. 
when you when you validate what your partner is saying by restating, um, you know, without sarcasm, without um, a tone, positively restating what they told you, and making sure that they understand uh, what what was just that making sure they know you understand what was just said. And a good way to um, do that, uh, the next point is to respond. Respond with, um, have you all learned the two questions to ask? When, no, I'm sorry. Okay, so one of the questions you would ask is, um, what can I do to make it better? How can this be better? Um, it's a response. So your spouse gives you a response and you ask a question seeking more information from your spouse. So how can we make this better? Right. And, and, and so, though, you know, there are actually two questions. And, and the first one is, what would you like for me to do differently? Right? What would you like to be done differently? Right. So if, 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 if that question is asked, again, you are validating your partner's concern because you're, you're basically asking an open-ended question. What would you like for me to do differently? And then the next question is, how can I make it better? And those two questions, again, are a blessing. Um, I mean, when you really think about how a discussion could go, when you get defensive and when you don't validate what your partner is saying, or you get become argumentative, or you know you don't want to talk. Um, and what Pastor Kelly was saying earlier about avoidance, um, it's okay to take a break. It really is, but eventually you have to come back and have that discussion. And oftentimes it's a good thing to put a time limit on it. You know, um, that's something that Angela and I, we through our first year of marriage, we got into these discussions and we would go on and on and on. When you're going on and on and on and on and on, people get tired. And you end up saying something that you shouldn't say. Um, and so it really is good to put a time limit on it. Um, you know, if the person doesn't want to talk yet, one of you doesn't want to talk yet, then say, okay, let's set a time that we come back and talk and then set a time limit such that you can have a good discussion, a good exchange where you're both comfortable and where you are attending to each other and you're responding to each other and you're giving each other eye contact. All of that good stuff is really important. And taking time also allows you to pray about it. Um, even before you have your discussion, pray for yourself, pray for your spouse. Um, just ask God for the correct words, words that your spouse can hear. Um, ask for wisdom to know how much the person is receiving. Um, just ask, ask God. To, to lead and guide your discussion. Um, and if it goes long, take a break, pray, um, and just really seek how to um, communicate with your spouse. So yeah. we have the question. Right. So, um, so yeah, can that's- I, Can I? Anyone have any um, questions? Sure. I have a comment. Okay. <laughs> um, one of the things about that, um, what could, we can do to make it better? What can I do to make it better? Um, do you guys want, um, can you comment on reasonable, measurable, and repeatable? Or do you want me to do that? Oh, absolutely. Um, so um, when you're, when you're um, answering the question, how you can make it better, um, because, you know, if I'm the one with the concern and then I go to Angela and Angela asks me the two questions and she, and she asks me how I can make it better, I need to be specific as to how she can make it better. 
And, and that's how you really, when you're really trying to solve things, and interestingly, we, we have an issue, um, and if we've prayed about it and we've gone to God about it, we should have really a good idea about what we want, right? And, and how they can make it better. And so it needs to be something that's measurable. It needs to be something that's repeatable. It needs to be something that they can actually do to make it better. Otherwise, we're in a vicious circle. I'm upset, but I can't tell Angela um, how she can help me, how she, how she can help me feel better about the issue that I'm having. Mm -hmm. so that's really important. All right, so, um, so that's, that's active listening, I think. <laughs> Any questions? I think you guys are going to model that okay. with, with a worksheet. Um, do, do you guys have that there? We do. Yeah. So let me just give an intro to the, what the worksheets are. We've talked about it a little bit, but a refresher. Um, <clears throat> the inventory that we use in our coaching program is called the Life in Motion Relationships Inventory, and it has worksheets for couples to do after they have taken the inventory. You guys have been given in your participants guides um, copies of worksheets to actually practice. Um, and so we've been, we've been kind of teaching you how to do those. We've been modeling them, as you know. And I think Jenna and Ada, did, Gina and Ada, didn't you do that week one for us? You did one, yeah. So Alvin and Angela are actually gonna do one of their own since they've done worksheets, since they've been coached. Um, and they're gonna model active listening as they do it. Maybe it'd be fun to tell your story from a couple of times ago too, that, that was really fun. Um, uh, but afterward, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about, um, and, and you got an e email that actually gives you a link to take the conflict resolution uh, target for the inventory. So I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Keo and Chenda, you have a question? <laughs> Sorry, someone, someone's at the door. Um, I do have a question. So um, can you hear me okay? <laughs> yes. Um, thank you for sharing the tip about um, like the other partners like respond when uh, like a concern is brought up. And so I, I wonder like, like on the other hand, you know, I, you know, we, we each have our own parts. So say I were the one that brings it up to the other, my partner, are there tips that you would recommend where you would say it in such a way where instead of name calling the person where you like a soft startup where it's, it makes the person feel less defensive, but you communicate your needs to them. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. So, um, you know, in conflict of resolution, one of the really important things to um, think about is making sure that um, you pray first before you take your concern to your partner. Um, you know, as, as Christians, that's what we do because, and that's part of the change process. We want to make sure that, that God is in the situation. So, because Alvin has, you know, fleshly desires, flesh, fleshly concerns, um, you know, I need to make sure that before I go to Angela, that I pray so that, you know, my words will hopefully be seasoned with salt and it would you know, that I would be modeling Jesus in the way that I'm conducting myself. So I need to go and pray first before I go to her. Um, after I pray, I may decide that it's not something that I should take to her. It may be Alvin's issue that Alvin has to work through that I shouldn't concern Angela with. But if I pray and I decide that it, and after talking to God, um, that it's something that I should involve Angela in or talk with her about, then my words should be, as, you, as you've indicated, um, they should be gentle. They should be um, put in a way that's not 
offensive to cause her to be defensive because if she gets offended by what I say, then that's not good. Um, she's going to get defensive and, you know, and then, you know, we're going to be in a bad spot. So we want to make sure that I go to her in a way that um, I bring, that we bring God into it, mm -hmm. into the discussion. And that when I go to her, that she feels like, oh, you must have prayed about this because I like the way that you're communicating. There's no sarcasm. There's no negativity. You know, you're communicating in a loving way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's really important. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's a really good question. <laughs> definitely. Thank you. So I, I wonder, I don't know, I hope I'm not taking too much um, time up. Do you mm -hmm. think you can give me an example? Like, how, say, if something like, like hypothetically, where um, you'll go to her and how, how would you like bring that? You know what, you guys, um, I realized that I, I skipped something and I'm wondering, maybe you could use as an example the, I, the part about Angela's mom or mm -hmm. uh, Angela's family and the amount of time they spend. Right. You could just yeah, use that so, as an example. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. So, <laughs> um, and that brings us into the issue of uh, family of origin. So, um, you know, when I grew up, and my family, and I was thinking about this, I think it's just because, you know, my family's from the South. Um, both of my parents are from Florida. Um, you know, my dad passed away in, in, in 2015, but, you know, he would be in his um, early to mid eighties now. My mom is, she's still living, she's 81. And so, you know, they were very old school. So I would say it was competing and accommodating that, you know, my dad would pretty much lay down the law and then my mom was kind of accommodating. And then when he was away at work, my mom didn't work outside the home. She worked inside the home. But with, when she was raising us, it was the same thing. She laid down the law and we accommodated. And so that was, that was our style. And that's kind of what I learned. And so uh, being married, I had to like really reorient myself to things like, you know, being collaborative in decision making. And so um, Angela and I, it's funny, we go, when we go on vacation, we have the best times. We are like the best friends and we have the best times. The when we get into trouble is from like out, outside influences, like whether it be family or work colleagues or you know, our kids, you know, coming in, you know, it's, that's where we, that's where most of our conflicts come. And so the issue that we had when we first got married, you want to tell them about that? Well, it wasn't really an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> nonetheless, um, I came from a very similar family of origin that Alvin came from, but it was the opposite. My mother was very, she laid down the law. My dad kind of let her just do. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how she raised my siblings, siblings and I, um, she's, she's pretty much in charge. Um, which when I was divorced and single, wasn't really that bad. My family called me all the time. I'm that, that person that the family calls. Um, my sister lived in LA, so she would call me at 10 o'clock her time, which means it's really late here. No problem. I, I don't, you know, I go to work, I'm home, not a whole lot going on. But once Alvin and I got married, he didn't um, necessarily want for me to always be on the telephone. Like, you need to have a, you need boundaries. This is the time frame. Uh, but when we're home, let's spend time together. So um, that was one of the, the issues that we had. And I had to explain, I can... I will easily tell my family, like, don't cost so much, but it's going to take time because they've always been able to just do that. Um, 
And I think you were pretty receptive of, you know, as long as we get to that point. Yeah, so. And how did you how did you bring that up, Alvin? Just want to so make sure and, and oh, I lost you, Chenda. Yeah, make sure and help Chenda's answer that question. So how did you bring it up to Angela when it started to be, to, to become, you started to become aware of it? Right. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's interesting because I do believe that, I mean, we had discussions about it, um, about boundaries in particular. Um, and, you know, interestingly, that was one of the good things about going through coaching because that's some of the language that we used, you know, going through coaching, you know, setting boundaries and, and going to the journey to oneness, oneness class. So that to me seemed like a boundary that needed to be set. So there was prayer involved. I did pray about it, but the way I brought it up to Angela was, you know, we're a newly married couple and I wanna spend time to you. I mean, we came together really quickly. And so I wanna spend time. I want us to become friends. I want us to, you know, continue to be, build our friendship and get to know each other this first year. And so, you know, it was the first year and, um, and she was very receptive to it. She understood, which, which was good. And, you know, um, hopefully my language was such that that made it easier for her to understand. But yeah, she was very receptive. Um, she also told me that, you know, and it's situational because um, she is the person who are in her family. She's kind of a peacemaker. She gives really good advice in her family. Mm -hmm. And, and she, um, she's kind of that go-to person. So I had to understand that. And, you know, a lot of times it depends on what the conversation is. If it's just chit-chatting, that's one thing. But if there's something going on in the family, they actually need her to, to be involved. And so it's very situational. And we have, we have collaborated on it. One thing that we do, we're very respectful of each other. Um, like if one of my children call um, and Angela is doing something in the living area, I'll take the call in my, you know, in the bedroom, I'll go take the call. Um, and then I'll make sure that I don't talk too long and that I come back and spend time with her. And she does the same thing. So we have really collaborated on it. We try to spend that quality time each other. We're very busy, you know, professionally in ministry. Uh, we have a lot of things going on. So we have to make that quality time for each other. And when we're home and we have family and other things that come up, we have to put a limit and a boundary on that so we can spend that quality time. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Let me, um, let me just jump in there too with just a little, a little um, skill that I've learned. Um, and it's something you have to practice to get good at. But, uh, and many of you have probably already heard this, but the idea of using I statements rather than you statements. So I've got two things to add. So um, rather than me saying you this and you that, you noticed Alvin said, I really want us to have time together. I really want to spend more time getting to, you know, like he's saying what's so for him, what's important, why it's important, you know, just like sharing his heart. Instead of saying, you're just, you just talk too much to your family. He may have thought that though, you know, let's just be honest. He may have been thinking that, but that's not how he brought it. <laughs> no, no, okay. <laughs> but he's, that's not how he brought it to her. And, and so I don't even think that was a, something that Alvin was practicing, the skill that he knew. It was just, it was because he was praying about it. And so here's the thing, that is a wonderful thing to do. And in the moment, it, it's tough, right? It, it takes a lot of self-control. And that's, again, where the practice comes from. So um, I have an acronym. I don't think I've shared it with this class yet, but it's W-A-I-T. Why am I talking? <laughs> you know, so like if you start in on a conflict, if you bring something up and you have that, you get that really quick sense and you think, 
rut row, you know, <laughs> oh, here we go. That you can, you can say to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm grumpy or, you know, I'm, 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 I've had a really, I'm really tired or I probably, this probably isn't the right time to, to talk about this. Whatever it is, you can say, you know what, let's come back to this. Or you can maybe actually stop yourself from bringing it up and say, you know, I really, I'm just irritable right now, or I'm frustrated, or they did that, they've done that every night this week, you know? <laughs> and so I need to pray about this. And you stop yourself, you wait and stop yourself. It is one of, self-control is one of the fruits of the spirit. God says he will give it to us, but in relationship, we become kind of lazy. We become familiar and comfortable. And like Alvin said in the beginning, we might even become sarcastic. Um, it's a killer of, you know, of affection, sarcasm is. Some people like it and have fun with it, but we really, so anyway, I just, I wanted to add those two things. Um, I statements, practice making them everywhere in your life, not just in your marriage. What do I, you know, what, what do I really want to communicate here? Um, and then wait, you know, stop yourself when you start talking. Back to you guys. Yeah. Um, so, so the um, situation that we were confronted with, um, we used collaboration and um, we may not have even known it at the time <laughs> that we were doing that, but, um, but that's how we solved it. And, you know, a lot of times it's because you've brought Jesus into it, right? I mean, if we really think about how we personally would deal with things without Jesus, um, bringing Jesus into it, it would be a lot different. So praying about it definitely gives us, you know, the right tools to, um, to deal with it. And if you think about, um, you know, any conflict or concern you have, um, you think about that triangle, that, that um, vertical relationship that you have with Jesus. There's God at the top, and then there's your partner, and then there's you, and you're the triangle. Um, and so taking things to the Lord first, um, that really puts you in a position to um, use the right words, you know, for the Holy Spirit to give you the right words in your conversation with your partner, which is, is going to lead to a more civil tone. It's going to mm -hmm. lead to collaboration and it's going to lead to a better conversation. Okay. All right. Well, let's see then. Let's look and um, I think that what we want to do now is uh, model the worksheet that we have. And, and you know, Alan and Angela, I need your help remembering something here. The last time, did we do the, um, I become silent when I'm yeah. understood? Okay, I wasn't sure if we picked um, one of one from yours that was different. So in your participants guide, you will see a worksheet. And as, every, as I have been reminded, you have a PDF, so there's not really page numbers. Um, Real quick before that, uh, I want to, um, I just want to look real quick at active listening skills, but just, can everyone find that in their participants guide? There are seven things to do there. And so you guys are now, you, you know, you've, you've done a few of these, you've watched a few be done. I want you to start watching for these things. Um, so, you know, why don't I just share my screen real quick? Sorry for jumping in. Alvin and Angela, I'm going to be just a minute. So can you guys see the active listening skills? Yes. Okay. So face your dating partner or future spouse. So this is really important. You sit, you face each other or stand or whatever. You know, if you're walking, I guess it's okay, but it's good to be looking at each other. This really helps too with not doing something else while you're talking. Again, Alvin and Angela mentioned that. 
Maintain eye contact as much as you can. It doesn't mean have a stare contest. It just <laughs> means uh, make sure you know you have each other's attention. Minimize the distractions. We said that. Um, focus on what they're saying rather than on what you're going to say in response. This is often where we get in trouble. We are, um, we're deciding, we're thinking about what we're gonna say about three seconds after the person starts talking. And so while we can't necessarily stop that, we can correct ourselves. We can say, okay, I, I'm gonna have my turn later. Right now I wanna make sure and be present and understand. And then um, not interrupting. So again, this, so for some people, this isn't a problem. For some people, it's really hard, especially if you don't d agree with what the person is saying. Okay, but, but what we're gonna say now is this is their time to explain to me how they feel. And I will wait until a later time later in this conversation to speak up. Um, and then uh, your dating part, the other person should not interrupt you when you're speaking. You know, you, in other words, do unto others <laughs> as you would like to do. So th that's, that's that. I'm going to stop sharing now. And um, then I'm just going to get everyone's um, awareness of, it says conflict resolution worksheet, becoming silent when not understood. Can everyone tell me that they have that? Yeah, when I think they're not listening. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, if you don't, if you can't look at it right now, you, you can just listen and watch Elvin and Angela. But this is something we want you to do together. Elvin and Angela are just going to do the second half. So what you'll notice in this worksheet is there's, it starts out with it's an agreement, but we're going to do a disagreement, right guys? Right. Right. Um, there's scripture, there's the application. I'm scrolling down through it. There's principles, discussion questions. You're going to go through this long worksheet and you're going to come to a place where it says couples work worksheet section. And basically it's where we ask the two questions. And that's what Alvin and Angela are going to model for us now. Um, so I, I can go ahead and be the be the coach here for you guys. Okay. So you ready to talk about this? The, the statement was, I become silent when I am misunderstood. I'm sorry, when my husband, in this case, we'll do when my husband or wife doesn't understand me. Um, and so which of you said, which of you disagree or agreed with that statement that you become silent? So it was me, and I become silent when I feel like Alvin doesn't isn't listening to me when he doesn't hear me. Okay, I become silent. Okay, so that you see, that's what's setting this up. Angela um, said that she becomes silent, which of course is is not the preferred answer. We want to find improvement. So now it's, but this is a little interesting because. Um, what we want to do here is have Alvin find out why Angela is becoming silent. We're not going to focus on um, Angela wanting Alvin to listen better. Does that make sense? Can I get some nods? I don't want to confuse everyone, but we're going to yeah. focus here on, um, on Angela saying she becomes silent and Alvin wanting to understand more. Right. So I asked, I asked Angela the question, are there specific topics or areas of conflict that, that you become silent? Um, when I feel like you're not listening, um, it, I just, I become silent. It's not a particular, but I feel as if you're not hearing what I'm saying. Um, in, I just shut down. So what I hear you saying is that you become silent when I don't hear you, when I, when I don't feel like I'm, when you don't feel like I'm receiving what you're trying to tell me. So what can I do differently about that? What can I do differently? 
Um, so what you can do is um, just listen. I think you are trying to solve the issue and you're not listening. You're thinking of ways to solve it. Mm -hmm. So if you could just be present and hear what I'm saying. So how can, how can I make it better? By showing me that you are listening and not necessarily trying to solve. Is there, is there something specific I can do? Um, to let me know that you're listening. Um, like, like, put my cell phone down. Put your cell phone down. Yeah. Turn that game off. Stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> Stop talking. Stop, Stop trying to solve it myself. Stop talking. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Stop talking. And listen. And don't mm -hmm. try to solve it. It may be such, I just want to tell you what's going on. Uh, uh, that's good. So can you repeat that back, Calvin? So what I hear you saying is that you would like for me to not try to solve it, to just listen and to just be present. Yes. Yes. There was one thing at the end. Um, oh, you, that's right, you got not solve it, yes. Okay, so um, think of, let's, let's do this last question too. Um, how, and I'll, I'll direct this to you, Angela. How can this change, how will it enhance your relationship? What do you think will, will, it will be better for you? So I, I believe that if I feel as if you're listening, um, that will, it will make me feel better. It, it will validate that what I've said is um, heard and that you're, you're not just trying to fix it, that you're listening. Okay. So what I hear you saying is that you would like for me to listen so that you can feel validated. Yeah. Well, and and then you know, um, and I think Angela, um, that what will make it? What will be better? You know, how will it improve things for you? You will feel. I will feel. Um, I will feel like sharing. I will probably not shut down because I feel as if you're listening to me, um, that you hear me. I think it will be better. Um, and then just, yeah, just hear me. That's what I'm saying. That's good. Good job. So when we did it before. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, we did it before a couple of classes ago and I, I blanked out. I couldn't remember what uh, she told me I was not doing a very good job of active listening. And so it was, it that was a way not to do it. And <laughs> hopefully you're, you listen well enough to be able to repeat it. That was the lesson that I learned. Well, and Alvin, it was also hard because you did it in front of about 15 people. <laughs> but but the, I should actually get that. I think I, we said before, I should get the clip and play it for this. It was, it was just ideal. Alvin was, he was humble and he was, you know, like hanging his head. I don't know what you just said. Mm. Um, and, and, it, and you know, it happens, it happens. But again, that's why even, even though this sounded kind of um, scripted or elementary, you, you get the idea that it's practicing. When I practice that, it, it helps me slow down, helps me um, to, to say, can I do that? Can I say what's so for me? And so both Angela and Alvin took time. Um, well, Angela took time to say what was going on in her heart, what was true for her. And I bet you there are some other things that will be better. We won't talk, you know, we won't go into all the things that could be better, but that would be better the more that that happens. Closeness. Feeling like you're you're on the same page. Maybe your oneness is deeper, and so um, so then the other thing that I um, that I think about for this is um, is 
is that the next thing that might happen, remember we said, it's not your time to share right now. You'll have time later. You might want to just flip it. When you feel, when Angela feels like she's really been heard and you know there's the sense that you're, you're on the right track, um, Angela could say to Alvin, is there anything that I could do better? So, you know, Alvin, we don't really want this to be a time when you defend yourself, but, um, but there might be like what I, I always say that Ron and Barbara, the couple, the couple that shared the first week, um, he says that she thinks out loud a lot. And so um, he, she, he, they came to the point where he said, all right, you have to, you have to say my name before you start talking to me. <laughs> If you want me to answer, you have to say, Ron, da 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 because she would be talking and he'd just tune her out. Now, that's kind of a silly example, but, um, you know, there's something about, there might be something that we can do to improve getting each other's attention or whatever. So, Alvin, anything like that, um, does that ring true for you or... Yeah, I think a lot of times when we want to uh, get each other's attention in a gentle way, we'll start out with like a term of endearment, you know, honey, sweetie, you know, especially when you're talking about something that's difficult, address the person not in a, you know, a loud voice or in an angry fashion, but bring that gentleness to the conversation and you know, so a lot of times I'll say, sweetie, and she'll know that I'm getting ready to <laughs> say something that, um, you know, might be a little tough. Um, and then you try to use gentle words and have that eye contact and, and you know, again, pray before we even bring things to, yeah. to our partner. Yeah, that's a... You know, I always say, shoot up a prayer. You may not have time, to, <laughs> um, but it wouldn't be a bad idea, you know, just to have a, a prayer first, just to say, you know, Lord, we're in this. We, we want to come together on this. We want you to be a part of this. Be with us, Holy Spirit. You know, that is a, that's a way, that's a good enough prayer. That's a wonderful prayer to do before. But sometimes I have to say, Jesus, what am I doing? You know, what is, what is my goal here? And I can tell you guys, I don't, I always forget if I've told stories, but one time I brought something up and my husband looked at me and he said, do you really want to go there tonight? Did I tell you any, did I tell you guys this? Do you remember? And, and I remember we were making dinner and I complained about something that he hadn't done that he said he would do. And it was a big project and it had been going on for a while. And, and, and I, he said it to me, he didn't say it threatening, you know, like, but he just, he was like, you know, kind of a nonplus, like, is that really what, you know, you want to do tonight? And I looked at him and I, I, I just, for a minute, I thought about it and I followed it through to the conclusion. And I said to him, no, <laughs> I did not want to do that tonight. <laughs> And, you know, there's a better time. I just, it just struck me so much then that, that I can slow my, I can say, what am I doing? Why am I saying this? You know, what do you, what do we want? Um, so good job guys. And, and thank you for just letting it be so natural and not scripted. And um, um, so you can, you guys got a really good example there of, um, of what it's like to use the act of listening the normal may, way is probably for one person to start talking and get about halfway through the paragraph or the few sentences they want to say and the other person say, that's not the way it is. I didn't have a tone. I did, that's not the way I do it. Or what are you talking about? That's not. And, and so you're, you basically are shutting down communication when you do that. And some of us feel like we have to defend ourselves or we're going to be taken advantage of or we're going to be not listened to or whatever. And, and what I wanna say is ask God for courage to wait and to hear, thing, hear this out and say, and if you don't agree with what they say, try my statement that I, I, I talked about last week. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about what's happening there. I have seen my husband's entire countenance change when I ask that question. 
You know, he's ready for me to, to defend myself every time. And the more that I've employed this, that I've been able to say, tell, okay, tell me more. You know, he knows I don't agree or I don't, I'm not on the same page. Tell me more. What do you think? Why are you saying that? And then he can actually share rather than me saying, you know, well, give me an example of when I did that. <laughs> Tell me when that happened. When does that happen? That never, you know. Well, that puts you on the road to conflict, more conflict. And so, again, if, if you can slow yourself down, um, it, it will help. And give each other, my goodness, give each other grace. I can't tell you how time, many times my husband and I have just, we both shut down, by the way, when we feel misunderstood. It's a bad combo, guys. <laughs> it's a bad combo. But we, we come back to one another and we say, I'm sorry. Or um, my favorite one ever was my husband said, whenever we disagree, I always feel like you're going to take something from me. And and I remember realizing in the moment when he said that, that I said, and I always feel like I, you're not going to give me what I need. You know, both of those were family of origin things. And we, at, at like eight years in, maybe 10 years in, we realized that's how we were operating. I'm afraid I'm not going to get what I need. and He's afraid I'm going to take something he doesn't want to give. And, you know, talk about the, the ultimate, but but the more we do come back to one another and say, that's, you know, we know this is not how we want to be. And I'm sorry. And, and then we, we pray or we just hug or snuggle or something and we get back together. Um, but you know what I just want to say when I say that, that sounds so nice, but not everybody has that, that temperament, right? Not everybody's personality is like that. Sometimes I need more time before I feel snuggly. It's okay. It's okay for me to not be okay. Um, and, you know, but remember what I, when we talked about forgiveness, it's, it's understood that I'm not going anywhere. It's understood that I, I will come back, but I need time. Um, so anybody have any comments or questions for us? I'm going to, I'm going to do an explanation, but I'd love to hear if anybody's thinking something about this. Hey, Rodney. Okay, I, I guess I could say something. Um, the seven active li listening skills, um, I think, were great things that were pointed out. I also think that um, before you get to those, either you want to pray before you roll those out. Cause it, I mean, although we, we, we went over it and hopefully we maintain that, I think that um, prayer kind of sets the, the tone. Um, somewhere you gotta, I, there's gotta be prayer mm -hmm. in here. I think, I think when, it, when it gets up to like, for example, when, pe when people, when both are shutting down, Okay, oh, yeah. that's when some someone has to. It doesn't matter who, but somebody has to get in there and 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 just pray. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't give up. And sometimes you feel like it doesn't work, but you just pray and pray again. You might have to pray um, sometime later, you know. <laughs> but somewhere there's got to be prayer. And I and I do like the fact that they did miss mention that before you go to your partner, yeah. pray. So that's just all I yeah. got to say. Great, great um, comment, Rodney. Um, and I think too, we might say that this, that the active listening and the worksheet questions aren't always possible in the heat of the moment. You, you, this, this may be more what you do when you come back to it. Um, and I would say that the more you come back to it, the less it'll happen, the less there'll be heat of the moment things. But, um, but yes, it's, it's very difficult. We used to say, you know, we used to tell people, hold hands and pray. Well, when you're mad at each other, <laughs> it's very hard to do that. Or when you're hurt or, you know, offended. Uh, and yet, I can tell you, sometimes just a touch of the hands 
kind of dispels some of that. You remember who you are, whose you are, what you're for. Um, but I have asked my husband if we can pray and he said no before. Like, not right now, no. And I have to say, okay, and vice versa, you know, it's, it's, we're human beings, right? We, we, we have human you know, Well, Well, we have to, oh, go ahead. No, you, you, uh, Alvin, go, okay. I'm just gonna get to Let's, Jamel and Chris. Yeah, what I was gonna say is what we have to keep in mind is that, um, you know, uh, one or both parties might be upset. And I like, for that reason, I like Rodney's comment about, you, you might have to pray in the moment, you know? Um, and, and then the other thing that we have to keep in mind is that we have to submit to the relationship, right? Um, if we look at it from a I selfish standpoint mm -hmm. um, and we have pride, then it's hard to do that thing. But if we are saying this is for, I'm gonna have this conversation for the good of our relationship, we're putting the relationship first. We're taking you know, our selfish desire not to talk at that time. And we're saying, I'm, I'm gonna do this for my relationship because it's worth it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good stuff. Chanel? So I had a question about, I think it's the, the, the chart with the independence and the closeness and how you manage conflict. Um, I guess what's the difference between choosing your battles or having that pause and recognizing that maybe what's bothering me is not worth the conflict or not, or kind of like dealing with it self versus um, it being into the category of avoidance. You know what I mean? So because sometimes it's like every, every little thing. So for example, we, we haven't lived together yet, right? And so there's gonna be things that I hear from people about, you know, whether it's how someone stacks the dishwasher might be a thing, but you just, it's not that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? So I guess, how do you, what's the balance between conflict or, or, or being avoidant in how you handle conflict and also being mature or choosing mm -hmm. how to, that makes any sense. I hope I'm, I'm wording this yeah. properly. Let, let me just try and see. So like what I'm hearing you say is that how do I know if I think I'll just handle it myself that I'm not avoiding the conflict? Um, and, and that is a real thing, especially if you're on that um, bottom, you know, that lower corner, that lower axis. Um, I would say um, self-awareness is really good. And, you know, so there's the difference between saying, you know, it's not that important. I will, I will do the dishwasher however my husband asks me to do it. It's not that important. Or um, am I stuffing it down? And I, you know, am I going, oh, 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 you know, and just not saying anything and do I stuff it down and stuff it down? And am I developing um, a bad feeling or attitude towards him about it? So that I would say that self-awareness where I say, oh, no, this is not how I want to be. Um, and there are iterations of the dishwasher over the years too, so we won't go there, but, but, um, but I think that's the, something to be really aware of is if, if you're um, harboring something or developing a bad attitude toward the other person, that means it's a conflict that, that you first have to take to God and then somehow bring to, to each other. I think it was, um, is the change process where they say that, isn't it? Where like, um, like you, you, you take it to God first. And then if he says, you know, if it, if it just doesn't go away, I think it is, if it doesn't go away, then you make, then you bring it to your spouse. You guys. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, and I think that's a, that's a really good question. Um, mm. Because there, there are some things that, um, you know, if you gauge the importance of it, it's not worth mentioning. You know, it, it um, is not bothering you that much. It's not that big of a deal. And then there are other things that really, really need to be talked about, right? They're important to the relationship. And so that's the thing that you pray about and then you take it to your partner. Uh, but the other things, like there are things that 
you know, when you live, once you live together, you'll figure out that there are things that you don't like. I mean, it's just people do things differently. Um, I don't fold clothes very well. I, I, I fold clothes very sloppily. And Angela folds things very neatly. And sometimes she just refolds them and <laughs> I'm okay with it. You know, I don't get offended because I know that about her, that she, she's very neat when she folds and I'm not. I figure you're gonna use it again, so why, why fold it neatly, so. My, I had, I, my, uh, my son said the other day something like, um, my, my husband asked him a question, he said, I need to talk to mom so she can tell me what I did wrong. <laughs> How, how I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And, and you know, he's, he's 20 some years old, but it's, so it's like, he knows it's not gonna be up to my standards, but, <laughs> but he's accepted that, you know, like, it's just the way it is. So, okay, guys, we are at the end of our time together. And- I had a question, someone else. Oh, who did? Well, let me just, Maya, I'm gonna let you, but I, I just always like to um, tell people you're free to go. If you have to stay with us. We're going to talk a little bit about the inventory um, and, and find out what Maya's question is. So we don't want to hold you over time, but, um, but we're happy to stay on a little longer.